All right. Uh, well, thank you, everyone, for uh, taking time out of your busy schedule to learn more about Envoy Gateway. Uh, my name's uh, Danian Hansen. I'm an engineer with Tetrate. And my name's Alice Wasco. I am an engineer with Ambassador Labs. So this is an Envoy Gateway uh, project update. Uh, six months ago, we released the project publicly at, uh, at EnvoyCon or at KubeCon EU. And uh, we received a lot of positive feedback on the project. And when we released the project, it was really nothing but a design spec and a public announcement that uh, we are forming the project. And when I say we, uh, it, it was uh, Tetrate, Ambassador Labs, as well as VMware that came together uh, to, to announce the project. Um, and uh, thanks to, uh, to Matt Klein for kind of shepherding the group together and, and getting us going. And we've accomplished quite a bit in the last six months that we're going to go ahead and, and uh, cover during today's session. Uh, but before we get into what the project's uh, been up to, I wanted to just take a moment and, and give a quick uh, history, which I've mentioned a, a few pieces of it, but as most of you know, Envoy started uh, back in the fall of 2016. And it, even though an, um, Envoy became synonymous with service mesh, it actually started as uh, an edge proxy within Lyft. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, in the spring, uh, Envoy Gateway was born with the focus around these two areas. How do we bring Envoy to the masses? Right? Uh, Envoy has become very popular, both again as a, as a uh, sidecar proxy for service mesh, uh, as well as uh, a, an edge proxy. Uh, but we wanted to take Envoy to the masses, take it even further. And one of those areas that we needed to address is how do we uh, make the user experience simple? How do you make it simple to consume and start getting value out of Envoy Proxy? And so, uh, why should you care about Envoy Gateway? So, Envoy Gateway provides that batteries included experience, right? I don't have to set up my own XDS control plane. Um, I don't have to um, go ahead and manage a bootstrap config file on my own. Um, I don't have to know all the details of XDS to start deploying Envoy in my infrastructure, to start routing traffic through uh, Envoy to my backend services. Um, and what you'll see here in, in a moment is two very simple commands will get Envoy installed and start routing traffic to your backend. And one of the key aspects of, uh, of Envoy Gateway is that it supports multiple user personas. And the way that this is accomplished is through uh, Gateway API. So what, uh, what you're going to see here in a moment is some of the uh, system internals of Envoy Gateway. And we decided on using Gateway API uh, to provide our user uh, interface as opposed to creating some project-specific API. Um, and so uh, Gateway API was created, I think, about three or so years ago. Um, I was actually one of the uh, founding maintainers of the project and have since um, given up my maintainership there. But we have other uh, maintainers and contributors uh, to Envoy Gateway that are Gateway API maintainers, right? So we're, we're tied very closely to the Gateway API community. And it is, a, uh, it is a set of APIs that is uh, gaining wide adoption for uh, service, of service traffic management. And we decided to adopt Gateway API, again, instead of creating our own project-specific APIs. And that's what gives us this multiple user persona support, right? And so what you're going to see is there are certain resources that would be used by an infrastructure team for creating the Envoy proxy infrastructure. And then a separate set of resources that would be used by your app dev team, right? And, and uh, the primary resource would be the routing resources 
for example, HTTP route for routing traffic to uh, your backend application. And it's extensible, again, not only through Gateway API, but we have some native extension points within Envoy Gateway. But it is ex extensible in the sense that uh, we define through uh, APIs a basic common uh, uh, level of configuration and management. And these extension points allow Envoy Gateway to run, let's say, in different providers or to support different types of functionality like AuthN and AuthZ. Um, and again, uh, those extension points are both native as well as through Gateway API. And uh, one of the focus areas moving forward with the project is focusing on these extension points. Uh, so uh, what the project has been focused on for the V02 release, which just released a couple days ago, uh, is that we developed a solid foundation uh, of the project. And as we now transition from establishing that, uh, that solid foundation and now focusing on advanced use cases, this is where we're gonna be spending a lot of time here in the near future is, is with these extension points. And I say it's built with community horsepower, right? So uh, you know, creating an open source project is pretty easy to do. Uh, creating a community around an open source project is, is more challenging. And I'm really proud of where we're at with the project. We have a ton of different contributors, which uh, you'll see here in a future slide, uh, that span a bunch of different affiliations. So this is not a project that is run by a particular company or affiliation. Uh, we, we've got quite the diversity already in, in the project and we're excited uh, to uh, see that grow. Right, and, and so if we look at Envoy Gateway, pretty straightforward, right? It, uh, it runs, it consumes configuration, both static and dynamic configuration. The static configuration is used to start up Envoy Gateway, and then the dynamic configuration is used to configure its runtime. Um, and that dynamic configuration is expressed, again, through Gateway API resources. And then it manages a, a fleet of proxies, Envoy proxies. And let, let's dive into Envoy Gateway uh, a little bit deeper, right? So just like the picture we saw back here, now we're zooming into Envoy Gateway, and we see uh, a few things that uh, Envoy Gateway is comprised of. Uh, the first uh, point is we have a provider. Right? And so currently the only provider that Envoy Gateway supports is the Kubernetes provider. And Alice is gonna show you a demonstration of Envoy Gateway uh, using the Kubernetes provider. And a provider is responsible for certain tasks, uh, for watching the resources, the dynamic configuration. Right? How are those resources expressed? It's through Gateway API resources, but those Gateway API resources in a Kubernetes provider, those would reside in a Kube API server, right? So a user creates those resources, and when you start Envoy Gateway and you say use a Kube provider, it uses a Kubernetes client, uh, specifically the controller runtime client, to, to uh, communicate with a Kube API server to watch those resources. Right? as well as to watch any of the dependent resources for managing the Envoy proxy infrastructure. Right? Um, it's, the provider is also responsible for storing, uh, persisting that data. Right? So again, Kubernetes provider, pretty straightforward. Uh, that's stored in etcd, uh, as well as for service discovery. Uh, and uh, Kube provides that via Kube DNS or Core DNS depending on how your cluster is configured, but typically core, uh, core DNS. And if we think of Envoy Gateway, how does it take this configuration, uh, especially the dynamic configuration, just think of it as this kind of, this, this pipeline, right? And so as a configuration comes in, uh, the provider ends up passing that configuration after it's been validated and so forth. Um, it then publishes that, right? So all of these different system components communicate over a, uh, a message bus via pub sub and what we uh, the way we implement that message bus is through what's called a watchable library 
And all these details, we, um, if you go to the project documentation at, at um, gateway.envoyproxy.io, uh, if you go to the project documentation, we have all of the system design documented. So it's a really good place to start where we've had contributors come in and have given us really positive feedback of uh, looking at the system design documentation. But uh, this diagram and, and, um, and all the information I'm going to cover is in the system design documentation. But again, all the, the, all the different uh, components communicate over this message bus. And it's a simple kind of translation pipeline of translating the gateway API resources uh, into our internal representation, our internal da data model, what we call our IR. And you see the IR is actually split between an infra IR and an XDS IR, right? And so that resource translator will go ahead and take those gateway API resources, translate them into our, into our internal data model. And one of the things not depicted on this diagram is uh, it should actually have an arrow going out of the system as well. And that arrow is for updating status uh, of the resources as they reside in uh, wherever those resources are persisted. So again, with a Kubernetes provider, those resources are persisted in etcd. And so uh, the resource translator not only translates the resources inbound from Gateway API resources to our uh, internal representation, but outbound, it's responsible for updating status, right? So as it translates and says, oh, this is a good translation, we're good to go, let's go ahead and update the status of the Gateway class or the Gateway or the HTTP route. But again, as we, as we go through this configuration pipeline of taking the dynamic configuration and um, uh, putting it through the pipeline, uh, we have the resource translator translating those external resources into our IR. And though you'll see that we've got an, uh, an infra manager and XDS translator. Those two uh, services uh, uh, subscribe to the resource translators, uh, whatever the resource translator publishes. Right, and the infra manager right now, uh, the only implemented infra manager, again, is a Kubernetes infra manager. And that infra manager is responsible for taking the infra IR um, as input and then as output, creating the necessary Kubernetes resources to manage an Envoy proxy fleet. So it is managing the deployment resource that's used for deploying uh, Envoy proxy. It's responsible for managing the service that front ends the fleet of Envoy proxies. Um, and also a service account that's used uh, to secure uh, the, the deployment and then on the uh, very similar uh, pipeline here on the right-hand side as well, where the XDS uh, IR or the XDS translator consumes the XDS IR, and then uh, it publishes to the XDS server, uh, and the XDS server via uh, Delta XDS pushes configuration to the managed proxies. Let me hand it over to Alice. So Danian just mentioned that a couple times that we are using the Gateway API resources for configuring Envoy Gateway. So let me go into that in a little bit more depth. Um, so as of the 0.2.0 release, which is our first functional release, uh, we have full core support for all of the Gateway API fields in Gateway classes, Gateways, HTTP routes, and TLS routes. So really quick to go over the first one, Gateway class, which is how you're gonna get started. You have, the main thing is this controller name, and it's a string, but I had to cut it off since the presentation's a little short, but um, that is what's gonna let Envoy Gateway know that it is responsible for managing this gateway class and all of the gateways that reference it, so that when you create those resources, it's gonna make sure that Envoy Gateway is updating its configuration and watching those. So the next thing you're gonna create would be your gateway, and this one is going to, again, reference that gateway class and you'll set up your listeners here for how you want Envoy Gateway to listen for requests. You can add multiple listeners on your gateway 
And then once you create this in your Kubernetes cluster, it's going to trigger Envoy Gateway to create some resources for you. So first thing it's gonna do is spin up a deployment that is gonna have Envoy Proxy running, a service for that Envoy Proxy with the port that you established in the gateway, and then a service account for that gateway as well. And so as far as getting service traffic, traffic to your backend services, you'd be using HTTP route or TLS route. And for these, you can again refer to the parent gateway, which is going to trigger Envoy Gateway to configure that specific gateway to route traffic to this backend service that we've defined in here on the provided port. You can limit it to certain host names, which is not required, but is optional. You can again have it do all host names by just leaving that field out. There's also support for filters, redirects, things like that right now. And the main benefit of kind of, again, why we chose Gateway API resources for configuring Envoy Gateway is one, it's established, and two, it's well known. So we want people to get that benefit of not having to jump between a bunch of different APIs, certain different projects creating all their new CRDs. Then you have to memorize like, okay, what is the CRD? Is that specific to this project? Is that a more broader Kubernetes resource that I can use in different things? So this takes a little bit of that cognitive load off. And then additionally, you benefit from kind of what Damien said about the multiple user personas. You can have your cluster operators, your admins, worry about kind of your gateway, your gateway class resources, and then let your developers and the people that are worrying about traffic getting to a specific backend service, just focus on the HTTP route and limit what they need to be aware of and the number of resources that they need to edit to get traffic going to their service. So I'm gonna quickly make sure Wi-Fi is going well, and then I'm gonna try to do the live quick start for you guys. So give me a sec since I've got to pull this over to this other screen. Yeah, while Alice gets that set up too, I just want to emphasize in that last slide, you saw three different resources, gateway class, gateway HTTP route. And if you look at the gateway API documentation, there's other resources as well. Uh, there's, uh, you know, there's resources for uh, being able to share secrets across different namespaces. This is called a reference grant. Uh, there's TLS route, UDP route, TCP route, all you know, basically protocol specific routing resources. Uh, and we support gateway class, gateway, HTTP route, TLS route. Uh, and we have plans to support some of the other resources as well. But even though you see that those three primary resources are used, again, in the early days, I was a uh, part of Gateway API and, and we went from, okay, we've got an ingress resource and now we're gonna go ahead and have multiple resources. And it is needed because of the feedback we were getting from user, the user community that you have these different user personas and a single resource does not work uh, as intended, right? And so we need to have these different resources so that the infrastructure, per, uh, you know, the cluster administrator, infrastructure admin has resources that can control the gateway, actually exposing that infrastructure, right? Uh, creating the Envoy proxy and then, um, you know, exposing that Envoy proxy on the actual infrastructure. And so um, I, even though we have these multiple resources from a, del a developer standpoint, it's really just interacting with the routing resources. And again, that's not gonna say that those are the only resources we're ever gonna support or that we're only gonna support core fields. Those are just what we have available ready for you to try today in the 0.2.0 release. And we're gonna be adding support for more features, more different fields in the extended support for Gateway API and future releases. So let me see if I can get started with the quick start here. So these are the Envoy Gateway docs at envoyproxy.gateway.io. And then I'm just going to jump over here and walk you guys through the quick start really quick. All right, so first thing you'd probably want to do when getting started is hop over to this quick start. Like Damien said, you can get started with just two quick commands and a cluster, and you can do this in a real Kubernetes cluster that has load balancer support, or you can try it in a local cluster. So I'm just gonna copy the first command up here, which is 
installing the Gateway API resources. Yeah, so in addition to, this is essentially, this is installing Envoy Gateway, right? And so um, in addition to installing Envoy Gateway and installs the, the Gateway API CRDs, it's going to install uh, RBAC that's used by uh, Envoy Gateway. Uh, it's going to install a cert gen job. And this job, what it's responsible for is creating the TLS assets that are used to secure the communication between Envoy Gateway, which is the control plane, and the managed data plane, the Envoy proxies that it manages. So we have mutual TLS. Sorry, I think I messed up the paste in. <laughs> What's that? Maybe it'd be easier. As a backup plan, we also had a recorded demo, too. Sorry, give me just a sec. Oh, I see yeah, the Yeah, the, the, the screen's not showing up on Alice's, uh, on her desktop. She can't see anything going on. Give her one second here. But as I was mentioning, the first command here is installing Envoy Gateway. And then by, uh, by the end of that installation, Envoy Gateway should be up and running. You could tail the logs. You can uh, look at the deployment and see that it's running. Uh, yeah, you got a backslash at the end of it. One more. There you go. Hey, magic, there we go. Like I said, the CRDs, the RBAC, uh, the service, the deployment, um, and you do see that cert gen job again that's used uh, to secure the communication, create the TLS assets that get stored as a, a Kubernetes secret. Um, go ahead, Alice. Thanks. All right, so those are just the CRDs mostly, and then next thing we're gonna do is get started with the installing Envoy Gateway. So this, this next command, right? So Envoy Gateway is up and running. Uh, can you do maybe like a, uh, uh, a get deployment or something just to show that it's, uh, that it's up and running? So kubectl git deploy. Envoy Gateway, there it is in the Envoy Gateway system namespace and it is ready and it is available. So uh, it is, it's ready now to have users declare their desired state of the proxy infrastructure and then start routing traffic through that proxy infrastructure. And that's what the next step is gonna be to create uh, those resources. Yep, so this will deploy a gateway, a gateway class and a simple HTTP route. And then one last piece that it deploys as well in, in this uh, next part of the installation is a, a sample backend application as well. What we use is Echo Server. Um, that's part of the uh, ingress conformance, Kubernetes ingress conformance testing. And what's cool with that is that it just allows when we're testing and through curl commands, you could actually see some of the details of the pod uh, that responds to those requests to see what namespace and the, and the pod name and so forth. So when you start doing traffic routing, um, it, it gives a good illustration of traffic routing scenarios. It's really quick. I'm just going to show you again what we have installed from the YAML that I displayed. So we can see we've got our gateway class right here, and that has the controller name, letting Envoy Gateway know that it is responsible for managing this one. And then I'm going to quickly show you the gateway as well. And you can see that once it was created, it got assigned an address after it spun up a service uh, with a load balancer. And really quickly, I'm going to take a peek into this gateway. And then we can see here the main things to pay attention to are the uh, attached routes and we can see right now we're just using HTTP and that is for the HTTP route that we just created as well. 
And the status is really key here, right? Because, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the infrastructure admins, they go ahead and just deploy their gateway class and gateways and just be able to see that, okay, that it's ready to go. Same with the, your dev admins or, or your, your developers. They just go and, and list gateways and say, oh, look, here's the gateway that I can attach to. Let me just start creating routes. And there's, um, you know, the, the deployment status of the Envoy proxies um, along with a service. And, and we plan on expanding kind of all the plumbing that goes into surfacing status for gateways. So, um, so keep an eye out for that as well. For sure. So when Envoy Gateway reads all these resources and it processes them, if there are any errors with them, any issues, it will report that back to the status of each resource. You can just tell not only if there's a problem, uh, you don't have to necessarily dig into the logs to determine what that is. The status has a lot of useful info about maybe there are certain fields that aren't supported at the moment, certain things that you might have misconfigured, or any other issues that it was able to detect. So this is our HTTP route really quick here, and you can see that this one is only supporting traffic on hostname example.com. So any other requests that are not from example.com will not work. But we're gonna use a curl command really quick to test traffic to this. So I'm just gonna scroll down here to the section for pulling up requests for an in cluster. Uh, well, that's for your cluster supports external load balancers, right? Yeah. So scroll down some more, and it's going to be right where your mouse is. Go to the right, down. There it is. Double click on that. Thanks. I can't read Happy. it from the thing. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. So that's just setting the environment variable for the uh, status address of the gateway that was shown here, which is 34.121.122.105. Uh, oh, that has an issue. What's that? There's, let's see here. What, arguments in resource form must have a single resource. Yes, sir. Oh. Uh, we got an, we got a bug in in that stuff because oh we need the envoy service so I, I see we do need, still need the export envoy service can you just uh, bring this back to your yeah, desktop yeah, yeah. yeah maybe just slide it over go through the commands and then you can kind of just scroll back and uh, gotcha gotcha. Give us one second. It's a, a little challenging trying to do this where you can't see what you're working on. Oh, I see. I was copying the wrong command. Yes, yeah, so the first thing I was trying to do is just grab the service and then. Come over here. And then next thing I'm going to do is grab the host of the gateway. All right, and last thing we would want to do is just send a curl request to test out on the gateway. So this curl request has a uh, we're passing in the header for example.com since like I mentioned this is not going to accept requests from anything other than example.com and then additionally as we saw in the gateway that I showed back in the slides we've got 8080 set as our port same as this one so when we make that request we're going to make the request to port 8080 but you can of course change that to 80 or 443 if you're doing TLS traffic. And so this is just a request to the echo service which is just going to print back the request headers and information about the request, but it's also going to be able to tell us which pod served the request and a little bit more info. So I am really quickly going to jump back over to the docs and see if I can show you guys the TLS traffic working. 
Uh, really quick, Alice, because I see that the, we're getting the one minute signal. Oh, so gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, the other part of the demo we're going to do is just patch the gateway and add a um, add an HTTPS termination on that gateway. It's one command. And um, and basically what that gateway can now do is terminate TLS traffic. And it uses you know a, a secret that a user would create to uh, or typically your infrastructure admin would create that secret for that is, uh, you, is used to terminate that TLS traffic. Um, but go ahead and, and please take a look at the the documentation uh, and um, and give it a try yourself. Yeah, so we had a little bit of friction with the demo, but uh, really quick before we finish off, I just want to go over uh, some of our contributors that we've got from Envoy Gateway. So far, we've already got a lot of contributions from many different people. We've got a lot of expertise on this project, people coming from various different projects. I work on Emissary Ingress. We've got people working on other projects as well, like Contour, people from uh, got experience on Istio and as well as people that are working on Envoy itself. So we've got a lot of people working on making this as the best solution for an API gateway and bringing in a bunch of experience from people who have learned lessons building out these API gateways. Like with Emissary, when we got started on that, there were a lot of issues and design decisions that weren't great because we didn't really know what we were doing. Big goal with Envoy Gateway is just to combine all that experience and build something from the lessons we've learned from the ground up. And really quick, um, we might have time for questions. Hey, man, I, I know they're telling us to stop. Do we have? Okay, one question. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take one question, and then afterwards, Alice and I will be around here. You're more than free to go ahead and, and ask us. Uh, go um, ahead, you in the back. Yeah, so like Daniel mentioned, there are going to be multiple extension points we're looking at in the future, specifically for auth and stuff. But we're also going to be looking at adding like a uh, XDS, like patch in mode, so you can have sort of more direct access to the config that's underlying there for people where you kind of outgrow the needs of Gateway API. Um, if you are not familiar with Gateway API, I encourage you to go look at uh, the docs for that and check out all the different things you can do with it because its config actually maps surprisingly well to XDS config. So you can actually accomplish a lot with the CRDs, but uh, we definitely know that'll be a limiting factor for some people. So we are already planning out ways to extend the functionality. Yeah, we have an issue defined for kind of this native XDS mode where we're not going to try to just, you know, <laughs> duplicate everything that XDS does already. Uh, and so we're focused more on kind of that. Um, initial to kind of intermediate use case. And when you get to a point where it's like, okay, you've got a lot of advanced functionality going on here, let's use the escape hatch, that XDS mode, uh, so that we're not, again, duplicating everything that XDS uh, has to offer. All right, well, thank you. I appreciate it.